everybody, my name is Kyla Kazatsa. I'm an education major and a music minor at Southern Oregon University, and I've been playing clarinet for about 11 years now. Hi everyone, my name is Jamie Ditburner, and I am one third of the Shalama Clarinet Trio. I am a sophomore, almost junior, music education major at SAU, focusing in clarinet and piano. Clarinet was my first instrument, and I've been playing it for about 11 years since I started my fourth grade year back in Nevada, which is where I'm from. I love playing in this trio, and I love learning all different types of music, and all of the music that we have prepared for you is music that spans different time periods, and it was really interesting and fun to get to learn, and I'm so, so happy that we were able to do it, and I hope that you enjoy. Hello, my name is Tatjana Luce, and I am another member of the Shalomo Clarinet Trio. So I've been playing the clarinet for about 10 years, and because I'm 19 years old, that is more than half of my life. I'm a second year clarinet performance major at Southern Oregon University, and what that means is that I'm a music major who spends all of my time practicing this instrument. So I love to share music with people, which is why me and my friends are here to share this music with you guys in your homes, and I really hope that you guys enjoy. The clarinet has a pretty wide range of notes that you're able to play on it, ranging from super, super low notes to really, really high notes. And um, the range of a clarinet is broken down into three different registers, the really, really low, the medium, and the higher registers. And they all go by different names, and you'll be learning about all three of them today. But I'll be talking about the lowest register on the clarinet, which is called the Shalomar register, and that is where we got our name for our trio. And I will play you a little excerpt, and then I'll explain a little bit about it. I just played for you an ending passage um, of an etude that I learned a while ago. This passage showcases the Shalma register and all the low notes that are in it. This register is my favorite to play in. All of the notes are really rich and full, and um, the tone quality is really dark, and that is my favorite stuff to play on the clarinet. Um, this register has about 18 notes in it, and it starts with the lowest note that you can play on the instrument, which is a low E, and it goes to a middle range A. Next, you'll be learning about the middle range of the clarinet from Kyla. I hope you enjoy. Thank you. The middle range of the clarinet is called the clarion range. This range goes from the B above middle C all the way to the C two octaves above middle C. So those notes are and an example of something that could be played in the clarion range would be something like this. Again, now that you've just heard about the Shalomo and Clarion registers of the clarinet, I'm here to demonstrate the Altissimo register for you. So the Clarion register stops at about a high C, which sounds like this. And so every note above that one that can be played on the clarinet is considered Altissimo register. So this can range all the way up to a high C an octave above the one you just heard, which is crazy high. So high that I can't even play it and I've been playing the clarinet for 10 years. And so, the note that I can play, the highest note I can play, is a high A. And so right now I'm going to demonstrate to you what it sounds like to go from that C that you just heard to a high A. So that last note you just heard was a high A, which is very high. <laughs> now that you know what the altissimo register is, I'm going to demonstrate to you what it sounds like in the context of music. So what I'm going to play for you is an excerpt from a piece called Sonatina by Solowski, which is a part of my repertoire right now. Here we go. And so that is a part of the piece. And that is all I have to tell you about the Altissimo register. Thank you. The next piece you're going to hear is titled Gavotte and Rondo, and this is a piece written by a French composer named Jacques Dandreau during the Baroque era, which lasted from the year 1600 to 1750. Both a Gavotte and a Rondo are a popular medium-paced French dance form. This piece was originally written for harpsichord, which is a piano-like instrument that came before the modern piano that we have today. 
Um, composers during the Baroque era focused really heavily on writing beautiful melodies in their music, and they tried to evoke as much emotion in their listeners as possible. Prior to the Baroque era, choral music was really popular, and then in the Baroque era, composers started writing more, in more music for more instruments, and this eventually became more popular. This piece was arranged by Axman for Clarinet Trio, and I hope you enjoy! This piece is called Gavotte. It was written during the classical period where music was written for fun. People liked listening to music, so people wrote fun music to listen to. It was originally written for violin, um, and it was arranged for three clarinets by Oxman. <laughs> Alright, so I'm going to talk to you guys about Song of the Watchman by Edward Grieg. This comes from a collection of music of his called Lyric Pieces, and it is a series of short pieces for solo piano published between the years of 1867 and 1910. This piece specifically comes from his first book, and it's the third piece in the book, and it was originally called Watchman's Song. This book was published in 1867, so it fits right into the Romantic period of music. In this time period, composers were writing music that would evoke the most emotion possible. And so see if you can find the emotion that Grieg was trying to put into this music. And you may have noticed that I said that it was a series of short pieces for solo, solo piano, and we're not a solo piano. So this was actually arranged for three clarinets or a clarinet trio by Roxman. And so I hope you guys enjoy. <laughs>
For this next piece, I think that it'll be pretty recognizable for most of you, so I encourage you to listen to it and try to recognize where it's from. I'm sure that most of you recognize that piece from the Harry Potter movies. The piece is titled Hedwig's Theme, and it was written by John Williams, and the whole entire film score is considered to be one of the best film scores written in the 21st century. That piece was released in 2001 with the very first Harry Potter movie, Harry Potter and the Sorcerer's Stone, and you can also recognize it from all the other Harry Potter movies and the movie's Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Them, which is a spin-off of the Harry Potter series. Um, film composers like John Williams are a great example of how versatile composers and performers can be and that people write music and perform music for a variety of reasons and situations. Now we will play for you Nimbus 2000 which is also from the Harry Potter movies and it had its very first debut in the very first Harry Potter movie as well. I hope you enjoy these pieces and these movies as much as I do. <laughs> Alright, so the last piece we're going to talk about today is Sketches of Youth by Alan Reed. This piece was published in 1966 and is part of the Contemporary Era. The Contemporary Era extends all the way to modern times, or today. In the Contemporary Era, a lot of composers were writing music that was programmatic, or told a story. So this piece of music in particular tells the story of childhood, which is why it's titled Sketches of Youth. And the composer actually left a little excerpt for musicians to read before they play it, and I'm going to read that for you guys right now. This suite attempts to capture some of the moods of childhood. The first movement, titled Imagination, is wistful and distant, as is a quiet youngster playing his game of pretend. The consonances and dissonances of the second movement suggest that youthful ability to be both nice and naughty. Lullaby pictures the tenderness of a child asleep. The suite ends with a feeling of life and laughter. So, as you guys are listening to this, see if you can hear any of those themes throughout the music and see if the composer is able to capture any of those ideas. I hope you guys enjoy Sketches of Youth. Mmm. -hmm.
Thank <laughs> you.